Hello everyone, we're back here live at HP Discover, live in Barcelona, Spain for theCUBE, SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's flagship program, where we go out to the events, extract a signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of wikibon.org, and we're here at Tom Joyce, Senior Vice President, General Manager of Converged Systems. Uh, welcome back to theCUBE, CUBE alum. New role, well, we're not a new role for theCUBE, we interview you at HP Discover. Welcome back. Thank you, good to be here. So tell us, what's, uh, What's new with you? You have the new role. Tell us about your organization. It's growing. Met some of your new, new guys you hired in. Mm, yep. Tell us one, the focus. Again, let's review that and, okay. and what's changed. Okay, well we, uh, we started this business unit in um, May of this year. And so the last time we spoke uh, on theCUBE, it was about 30 days after we announced the group. So we were just getting underway. We really didn't have you know, the people in place. It was brand new, but that was at HP Discover uh, in Las Vegas in June. And since then, you know, we have, we've built out the whole organization and we've, we've done some pretty major product releases. So you know, to do that in a, in a company of this size that quickly, you know, it's been a, kind of a Herculean task. Uh, but you know, this week's been very exciting because it's the, some of the you know, really proof um, that the things we set out to do, we can actually do, do and we can do it with a lot of velocity. The focus um, has been to say, convergence has been a trend we've been all talking about uh, for, for literally for years. And in fact, HP started to talk about converged infrastructure back five years ago. Um, and over the course of that five years, we've made a bunch of big technology bets. We bet on 3PAR, as you folks know well. We bet on HP networking, and we've developed new Proliant Gen 8, new blade system, cloud system, matrix, a lot of new things. Um, but, and it's worked, right? It's worked extraordinarily well. Customers have, have bought it. We've seen tremendous growth in that category of offerings. But the customers have been coming back pretty consistently and telling us they need it converged more, right? They, they need it to have uh, a much greater simplicity. They want to squeeze the efficiency out of it that you would expect out of convergence. Uh, they want the whole, the whole business model to move faster. And so the goal of the, of the team was to basically take everything that we know about convergence, everything we know about converged infrastructure and all these new technologies and bring them together to do something fundamentally new. Um, and there are kind of two big dimensions of that. One is what do we do at the systems level with the software, you know, certainly with the hardware platforms, what do we do it with the product? And the other is what do we do to HP's business model? You know, customers are telling us, look, you need to be easier to deal with. And I think every company needs to be easier to deal with these days. They want, you know, different model for support. When they order it, they want it to show up in days. They want it to be in production. They just want simple across the board. And so um, we've focused a lot of attention on, you know, uh, bringing together the components and engineering them in a, you know, really tight way, but also kind of re-engineering how HP does business for these offerings. And the goal will be to say, the things we learn about changing the business model, we want to apply to other areas of the business in the future. So that's kind of the goal of the group. What was the reasoning behind setting up the group? Was it because, was it speed to market? Was it integration of technologies? Was it uh, one solution set for like a workload? All of the above. What, give some insight into, into the creation of the group and why. Well, you know, I think in all candor, uh, we did, uh, we've done a fair number of things, you know, right over the last few years um, in terms of doing solutioning. Uh, but what we found is that in order to do some of these complex solutions, getting uh, a lot of organizations within, even just within our company to work together, um, it can be done, but it's, it's difficult. So uh, tasking a group of people with the mission uh, to do this um, and to take things from wherever we need them uh, gives us an ability to just break glass. And so that's the first thing. And the second thing is uh, there is a difference between what the product and the offer, if you will, is going to look like if you're doing a converged offer versus what you're doing in the piece parts. Um, we actually don't want to just combine the components together. We want to drive convergence into the components. We want to uh, engineer our own 
the stuff we need to do ourselves in order to really make it a unique offering. So it's a combination of kind of how do you coordinate across a large uh, organization, but also this is a different product. Doing a converged product is different and it requires a high level of engineering. So those two things led us to say this is a discipline in and of itself. It's a category. Uh, we need to g double down hard on convergence and do it in a new way. I'm glad you brought that up because I wanted to push on that a little bit because okay. it's not just a go-to-market, right, no. clearly. So I wanted to ask you, you know, do you have an engineering component? You just said you, you do. Yeah. I wonder if you could describe that a little bit. Where do the piece parts leave off and where do you pick up? Yeah, that's a great, great point. So I'd say that there's a, a number of different parts to that, and I'll cover it as briefly as I can. So we have um, a system integration and engineering team. So that's a, a reasonably large team of folks that do actually do hardcore engineering about, say we take 3PAR, we take store virtual, what do we need to do to those products to engineer them into a converged system? Now some of the things we need, uh, we add in. Uh, a lot of the things we need, we would go to David Scott's team in storage and say, here are the requirements for your product to make it work in a converged way, and they do that engineering. So that requires engineering work and engineering cooperation. The second group of folks, and it's actually the largest group of engineering head count that I have, uh, is uh, doing the converged management. Because that's where you, know, you separate the, the men from the boys, if you will, is yep. that user experience. It, you know, it's not just the console and the look and feel and the GUI and the single pane of glass and all that kind of thing. It's also how do you automate? If you take server storage networking for virtualization, you want to build in automation capabilities. So that's uh, the second big piece of it. And the third piece, which I, I count as engineering, is operations. So when we go say, hey, uh, we want to collapse down how long it takes to get one of these things from an order, through build, test, ship. If I want to get down, that down to days, uh, that's an operations task, but it requires kind of engineering level operations folks. So uh, as we kind of thought very early, you know, like the last time we talked to you about what kind of an organization we need to do this right, there's clearly systems engineering, there's software engineering, and then there is operations engineering. Okay, and so that last piece, the operations engineering, is, is a lot of business process involved yes, in that yep. as well. Yes, What kind of right. people are actually affecting that? Is it literally engineers or? Uh, yeah, it's a combination of folks that have engineering skills and have just really hardcore operations skills. So uh, we kind of, uh, we brought in people from the outside, but we also uh, picked off some of the best people inside of HP that really know how all these all these systems work, right? We needed, we needed to find people that understood how the order processes works, how the, uh, how the manufacturing process works, and so that's what we put together. Um, and uh, you know, I think they've done an absolutely stellar job. It's interesting what happens when you tell people, we want to take all the skills you've learned you know, and apply them in a totally new way. Initially, it's like eye-opening, you know, but once they actually realize they're free to do something different and break some glass and that they've got the support of the management and from Meg on down, and Meg has spent time with me, with these operations folks saying, look, what are you learning? What are you finding? How can we take what you've learned and apply it somewhere else? And it's, uh, it's, it's exciting to see what they can do. Tom, what are some of the conversations you have with Meg when you talk about the group? I mean, she sits down with you, you mentioned, what is, what is she saying? Um, what does she talk to you about? What are some of the things you guys talk about? Well, um, I'd say, you know, it's, it's been an evolution because uh, we're all learning, right? And I think the first set of conversations uh, with Meg were, were really for, she's driven us to think about you know, segmentation, which is, you know, I've done marketing and business development for my whole career, so that's kind of, that's what you're supposed to know how to do, but Meg takes segmentation to an entirely new level. It's all about, let's understand who these customers are, what is our focus going to be, what is our focus not going to be, where are you going to play, where are you going to not play. Consumer background. Pretty much, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, she comes at it definitely from you know, the Procter and Gamble yeah. you know, view of the world. What businesses do we want to be in? What businesses do we not want to be in? And has applied that uh, here. So she put us through, uh, through the mill, frankly, in making sure we got our segmentation right and what we're going to target. And that's things like saying, okay, what's the difference between the customer that today is buying primarily virtual infrastructure, which is a $32 billion market, and the customer that's buying cloud? At what point do those two meet? At what point do they not meet? How are you making sure you build your product for that customer, giving them a path to the future, but really is something that solves their problem today? So that was the first set of things. Um, I'd say the other two places that she's really uh, uh, driven us is, is on the marketing and, and making sure that we uh, we got a good story and that we can tell it and it's clean and clear. Um, hopefully uh, you, saw, you saw our, our product announced me yesterday. Sharks, yeah, that's great. You know, we called the product, the, pr the code name for the project inside the company here, inside my group was called Project Sharks. 
and I can go into the reasons why it was called that, but when we launched it, uh, well, you know, we'll do that. Why, okay. why, why sharks? It's a good well, story. there were a couple of reasons. But the, the main one is, you know, when we started the group, you, know, you have to get people to think differently. You know, think like a startup. And you know, the initial instinct of people is to, is to say, hey, let's you know combine our products together, and that's going to be the offer, which is you know not all that compelling, really. And we we kind of said, look, we want to think about what's a metaphor for what this product needs to be, and said, you know, a shark is the perfect hunting machine. There's nothing wasted. It's extremely efficient. It does what it does very, very well. You know, every part of the, a shark is designed to do two things. At one end it eats, and the other end it provides thrust. It goes fast, right? And uh, said, let's design a perfect virtualization machine. And then that kept people thinking about, all right, what, is, what needs to be in it? What doesn't need to be in it? And so when we, you know, this is kind of inside baseball, I guess, but when we went down the path of doing the, the naming on it, you know, we came up with the name's Converge System for virtualization. Well, the conversation with Meg was, hey, what if we called it Project Sharks and told the world that? And that became, became you know, uh, a fun thing. So when the product came out on stage yesterday uh, in her keynote, we had the Jaws music playing and right. it came out and everybody kind of went nuts. Was, I think you yeah, were yeah, there. I was watching Big that. applause and it was yeah, just was fun, great. right? So um, yeah, I think that uh, that's another place she's helped us is let's get creative on the marketing. What can we do? Mm. And that's, uh, you know, she's, I'll tell you, I haven't, uh, I'm not saying this just because she might be watching, but she works extraordinarily hard and she gets deep down into the business and especially in that marketing uh, zone brings a tremendous amount of horsepower. That's great, good stuff. We have great feedback on Meg, it's been good. We can't wait for her to sit down on theCUBE. Meg, we're looking forward to having you on theCUBE. You'll be, you'll, we'll get you, don't worry. Meg, they're great um, guys, you ought to come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, she's, it's been great, great, great to have that uh, new management style. And also, the other feedback we heard from Meg also on Meg is that you know, she doesn't put the fear of God on people enough to give them enough pressure to be successful, but uh, let, let people be uh, happy in their jobs. Um, you know, be fulfilled, and so like, and I, I, that came across clear in her keynote when she talked about the humanization. You can see her focusing on the people aspect mm. fairly, fairly strong here. So, uh, do you agree? That's something that you're. Yeah, saying? I think that's absolutely right. I mean, she talks about trying to get the right people in the right job at the right time. So, a big part of you know being happy in your job is to make sure that you you, you know you've got a job that you're a good fit for. So that's definitely something that she has focused on. You know, she does you know she does do deep reviews. I mean, uh, think about it. This is a little business unit with no revenue yet and an enormous, enormous company. And we've been in front of her probably every other week. Yeah. You know? I mean, that's, that's incredible, actually, when you think about it. Well, I hope she keeps her eye on cloud because that's a, certainly a dynamic area with Amazon. We just said reinvent and the stuff that you're doing we're certainly seeing in the enterprise. So I got to ask you around your group because Converge Infrastructure has been hot for many, many years, as you know. And right now, we're at the, the boiling point. It seems to be getting hotter and yep. hotter, yep. especially when the stakes are higher, too. Now, you get cloud underneath, you get private cloud, data centers changing. We were just on the garden data center hashtag last night doing a crowd chat, Dave and I, and it's clear that this is all, the confluence is all kind of coming together. So I've got to ask you, relative to your targets, the mm. shark thrusting through the water, <laughs> are you, I mean, I'm assuming we'll say great white because it's a hunting machine. Yep. Um, are you targeting certain use cases, size of clients? Can you just go into a little bit more color on the, the prototype of the, kind of the prototypical customer uh, mm. and, and, what, and why you're building these systems? I'm assuming it's for larger scale, specific workloads. I mean, can you just elaborate more? Yeah, you know, I think um, we didn't want to duplicate what other people are doing. Again, you know, the notion of the Project Sharks was let's think about what's really required here. And so we had a couple of, we had a number of ideas that are different. So clearly you got to bring all the parts together, it's got to work better than the sum of the parts and the support model and the interface and all of that. But um, we also believed that if you look at what some of the other converged offerings have been, including our own, they are too high end. Uh, so we have a, an enterprise offering, we call it Converge System 700, that goes after the high end. But we also built what we call the Converge System 300, and we pushed that down as far as we possibly could. So this product uh, has an entry price, you know, at street pricing of well under $100,000, you know, with a VMware license or a Microsoft Hyper-V license. So you could be a Sand Shark or a Great White. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. It could be a Mako. It could be a Sand Shark. It could be a Hammerhead. White. That's yeah. exactly right. It's a Hammerhead. Um, so. Uh, I think that we also think it'll continue to move farther, farther, you know. So you, down envi you envision moving up and down the price performance Absolutely, curve. Absolutely, yep. And I think if you look at what we did with three par, um, mm. with three par when we acquired the company, it was it was up in the higher end. It was certainly large service providers, and our mission was to drive that, you know, t same technology down as far as we could. 
and I think it's you know it's good discipline. To, if you um, if you really want to be efficient, you've got to squeeze out as much as you can. Now the good news is that when we did that, um, this was some of the real engineering work we did to get that converged system 300 uh, to be really effective. We were able to actually wring out a lot of extra performance. So if you compare it to like a uh, V Block 100. Uh, we're getting substantially more performance than what they can do, and that's a function of the fact that you know, we do have new technologies, some of these new converged uh, infrastructure technologies that we've built over the last few years, and that actually when you put them together and you engineer them right, you can really, really you know, achieve something. Um, so, so yes, I think it's going to be something that's not just high-end, it's broad-based. Um, and the other thing is, uh, there are kind of two classes of if you, you say workloads or use cases. There's general purpose virtualization, and these systems, you know, they support VMware, they support Hyper-V, and the goal is to run basically any app you can run in a virtualized environment on top of that. You know, SharePoint, SQL, Exchange, whatever you're going to do. So that's very broad, right, broad-based. Um, and then you have specific things. So in addition to having a converged system 300 for VMware, as an example, you can have a converged system 300 for Vertica. It's the same hardware, but it just does Vertica. And over a period of time, you'll see us uh, qualifying and bringing out more ISV offerings. And the punchline for that is if you're a customer and you're building out your virtual infrastructure, when you bring in that Vertica thing, it has the same support experience, right? It has the same management experience, it has the same velocity. I order it, it shows up in a matter of days. So that's, uh, that becomes something different than thinking about appliances. It's a data center strategy. And what's different about it? It's optimized for you know, MPP workloads and those type of database workloads, yeah. right? And it's so going to be optimized for those type of database workloads, but it's not, you know, when I buy the Vertica thing, I get a totally different support experience right. and buying experience. And everything I buy is going to kind of have the same process, but it's going to do its job. But you could expect something for relational database, or maybe ERP, or what big data, or whatever. Build it out, you know, there's a lot of things we can do. And, and I tell you, just the, the hint would be that big data, uh, that's obviously a key growth area. Mm -hmm. It's an area where customers are spending money, they're putting budget out there. But most big data today, a lot of them are science projects, proofs of concept. If you could get that packaged up as an offering that was more ready for an enterprise, people would buy it. And the same is true for things like client virtualization and VDI. So a couple other questions while, while we have time. I want to get the business update, because okay. you're, you're, you're in a hot business. So we, John and I were talking, you know, going through sort of the HP financials at, our, at, the, at, the, at the kickoff, and one of the things that stood out yesterday, you know, when we were talking, was the, the converged business, mm -hmm. your business, mm -hmm. growing like crazy. Mm -hmm. um, give us the high level business update, whatever you can share with us, just for our audience. Well, I think there are some things that, that have been commented on that are really interesting, and one that's close to my heart, is what we've done in the converged uh, part of the storage business. And you know, I think it's no mystery, we talked about this you know, three years ago when yeah. I was on with you guys, that we weren't happy with where we were with the older storage technology, so we met some, made some big bets on things like 3PAR. And I think when, you know, when we acquired 3PAR, it was uh, about a $170 million revenue company, and it was a $2.4 billion acquisition. So um, $174, uh, $170 million inside of a, a company. It's a long way to go, says, right. Yeah, it's a long way to yeah. go. Well, we're finally at the point where that converged business has grown uh, to where you know it's 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 as big as anything we've ever done, and, and growing much faster than anything we've ever and done. And you got I think storage, you're so. publicly saying for forty seven percent growth is yes, what I heard on the, on the earnings call. So that's yep. that's massive. And the second thing I wanted to touch bases on, even though we had Kevin Garrison on this morning, yep. was the channel. So this seems like you're you're going hard after the channel. And to me, there's two two channel players there. One's the reseller channel. Yes. SIs and so forth, and the yeah. other is cloud service provider. So I yeah. wonder if you could talk about that a little bit in terms of the strategy. Well, again, um, so we, we, a lot of what we do in the channel is things that we did pioneer, I think, of, at least for HP around that three par 7000 launch, because that's been mm -hmm. the most successful product that we've introduced in the, into the channel in, a, in quite a long time. So a lot of those plays that we ran there, we're doing here. And um, you know, the channel's critical to what we, we do. I mean, we, uh, we've been a channel company throughout our history, and you know, there's definitely an opportunity to, uh, to do better and do more there. Uh, right now, uh, what do you need to do for the channel? Well, guess what? You need to provide them good economics. You know, so when we it's did this- It's all about the margin for them, <laughs> It's right. all about yeah. the margin. You, yeah. you talk to the customer, it's kind of what's the value prop? The value prop to a channel partner is, if I sell this, can I make money? And how predictable will it be? And how fast do I get to that money? Yeah. Right? right? So the kinds of things we talked about with the product also relate to that channel partner. That we can go in and cycle, say, hey, yeah. if, if I sell one of these products and it takes me 10 weeks, to get it installed, 
That's bad. I'm going to sell something else because I need cash flow and I need margin. Right, right because yeah. when it's installed is yeah. when they can start to bill for migrations and their own services and yeah. the things where they actually make a lot of money. So when we go in and we say, look, this thing from order to install, up and running, you know, serving VMs is 20 days, the channel partner says, okay, my time to billings is, is exceptional, right? Um, they also, we tell them, look, you're going to get a very predictable margin. You're going to be able to, if we can make it simple enough, be able to train more of your people faster. You're going to get more of your salespeople out selling. It's integrated, so you don't have to have three techs go out and configure the thing for the customer, server storage networking. It's just, we're trying to improve the whole velocity of the business. And, you know, clearly the focus is on the end customer, but there's a tremendous knock-on effect for the channel partner if we do it right. So that's why they, they said about time, Tom. Pretty so, much. <laughs> and then the, the, the cloud service providers, you, HP really embraced the cloud agile program yep, that yep. the 3PAR started. That's so what correct. about cloud service providers? So there's, there's a little bit of competition, obviously, with HP Cloud, but you got a good cloud service provider business. What's the uptake you know, potential there? and How's that initially looking? Well, you know, I think um, when you look at the channel and when you look at the service provider business, now, my view is it's pretty heterogeneous, right? There's all kinds of different plays. Yep. People trying to figure out what's my angle for this business, and people have different points of view. Um, I think where we've done really, really well is on those service providers that are saying, look, I need to move to the next level because I'm trying to pursue some business opportunities like big data, like you know, uh, SAP HANA in the cloud, things like that. Uh, when they're trying to look for new business opportunities, they're looking for efficiencies, and that's where 3 parts done really well, that's where Blade System does really well, and I think the next wave for us is going to be Moonshot. I mean, the Moonshot server for a service provider uh, gives them a level of scale and a level of efficiency that, that you know, it's a breakthrough, right? So, um, I think that uh, for those kinds of service providers, we do extraordinarily well. Yeah, Moonshot's actually interesting. That's that puts you into markets that nobody else really plays in from a converge standpoint, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. And you know, think about it, Moonshot is still, it's early, yeah, right? I right. mean, the product was announced in, in April of, of this year, so it hasn't been very long, but if you, if you listen to people, and again, especially service providers or people that are doing web hosting in their own company or, or, or providers, you know, it's a compelling thing. I mean, we're running a, a very large portion of HP.com on Moonshot, and Moonshot, I mean, that's, that website's getting hammered this week, it's yeah, doing yeah. just fine, yeah. right? Yeah. And the uh, economics around that, I mean, we're running it on very low power, very, you know, very efficient space utilization, and you know, that's whole, that whole eating your own dog food thing, and the, it's, it's playing extraordinarily well. Awesome, all right, Tom, well, John, you'll, you usually do the bumper sticker segment, but. Uh, okay, <laughs> lay out the bumper sticker for HP Discover. What do you think, uh, the, when the car leaves the, the parking lot of HP Discover here in Barcelona, what does it say on the bumper sticker? Okay, how about, um, Welcome to the new Shark Week. Everybody else ha. better get out of the water. Not Sharknado. <laughs> <laughs> That's For good. all you Twitter fans. Okay, <laughs> this is theCUBE, of course. We're excited to have Tom Joyce, uh, newly minted SVP at HP, great group. Uh, this is the future, I think. You guys are, have a lightning in a bottle, it's a great approach. I think you're going to see these kinds of large end-to-end -end systems just continue to grow. Um, the new HP, new style of IT, that's their bumper sticker. Uh, this is theCUBE, our bumper sticker is extracting the signal from the noise. We're glad to do it here. We'll be right back after a short break with our next guest.